So please, on your feet, put your hands together and welcome to Christian stage. Thank you. Have a seat. You guys are awesome. All, everyone online, it's always a privilege for me to have time with you. So let me ask you, what do I, why do I do this? Like, why am I using my life force and my energy right here in this moment to be here right now? What do you think? It's who you are. Fulfill your mission. Fulfill a mission. That's who I am. What is my mission? Anyone know? The world would tell you that I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a wealth builder, right? Like I'm here to make people rich and wealthy and give them, you know, blueprints and systems. But who am I really? All I do is bridge the gap from where you're at to where you want to be. That's it. It's real simple. You will have personal goals outside of this company. Yes. Yes. There's yes. things that you want there. By the way, how, raise your hand if you want this company to do something for you personally. Yet you want it to get you places. I see online. It's so awesome to have this camera right there. Benjamin, what's up, brother? Dude, it's great to see all of you and connect with you this way. I want to be really clear why I'm taking this time with you. It's because I want to drop some nuggets on you that will help bridge the gap from where you're at to where you want to be. Um, obviously, I would love for all of you to be multi six figure earners here because if you are, then you're going to have more money. And with more money, you can do more what? Service. You, you have the ability to invest and not just make money the way most people are. Most people are making money just for the purpose of existing, to basically pay their obligations that they've made in the past. You've all gotten yourself into obligations. You've all got yourselves into debt. You've done these things. You've built a lifestyle for yourself and now you need to service your lifestyle. So most people have a job just to do that, but you'll never get ahead if you do that, which means you've got to make more money than your expenses so that you have money to invest because investing gets your money working for who? You. Gets your money working for you. And then what it does is more money equals more options. Most people out there, when they get a lucky break, a windfall, a pay raise, someone dies, an ant leaves them some money, the stock market went up, something happened, crypto reevaluated. When they get a chunk of money, they only know how to consume it. And then it's gone. Most of the time they'll consume it to either pay off regretful decisions of their past or to increase their lifestyle. And so there's just a law called Parkinson's law that essentially says, we will spend what we make, plus or minus 10%. Which means that most people get trapped because how many of you know what it's like to feel trapped in servicing your obligations, you know or feel like you're not getting ahead and it can become really depressing. How many of you get that? So I want to bridge that gap today. I wanna to build you a cosmic bridge to help you figure out how to move past that. And the word of the day, feels a little bit like Sesame Street here. <laughs> the word of the day is alignment. What's the word? Alignment. What does alignment mean? Balance. Means balance. What else does alignment mean? Doing what you say. Doing what you say. For me, that's the definition of integrity. It's in order. What's that? It's in order, I mean. I it, it's, it's putting things in an order? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is so much duplicity in our human nature where we will say one thing and we'll do a different thing. We sacrifice our integrity. And anytime we are out of alignment, we lose momentum. And so you have to ask yourself right now, what does my paycheck look like based on what I did last week? What does it look like for what I did the week before? What does it look like for the week before? And what does it look like for the week before? If you've been here for at least six months, I can tell you that the last four weeks are highly indicative of where your financial barometer is at. And either it's enough money to barely pay the bills, it's not enough money to pay the bills, or it's more than enough money to pay the bills, or it's more than enough by a long shot. So the reason why we don't get where we want to go often is because we actually have a misalignment. We say we're gonna do certain things that we don't actually do, and we're actually making contrary choices in our life. And what that does is that robs us of the steam and the energy that builds momentum to produce a positive outcome. Now, momentum can be a lot of things. It can be, I've got an intention of losing weight, and then for lunch, when I went to Harmon's, I had a choice of getting the salad, but instead, I put the crispy fried it like chicken on my salad. And I also added some sushi rolls. And before you knew it, I downed 1500 calories. I took down 75% of the calories that I needed for the day in a single meal. You know, I was trying to lose weight. I consumed all my calories in a single moment. 
Tell me the destiny of that person's health 10 years from now. Will they be at their same weight? Will they be heavier or will they be lighter? Yeah, they're gonna be heavier. So there's a misalignment in what they're claiming they want and what they're actually doing. Big part of what I do in the world is just help push people back into alignment. Now, last week was a really cool trip for me. I was in the Galapagos and I got to cross off a bucket list. I'm, I'm huge about eliminating my bucket list. Like I love, uh, I love taking dreams that I've had for a long time and then crossing that off. And then I like to look at the genesis, the epigenesis, the start of how it actually came to be. Because last week, my, my family, we rented a private yacht for the week. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about four story tall, 143 foot long yachts, but they are not inexpensive. It's not like a 10 or $20,000 rental. It's considerably more than that. And then you got your private jet that's taking you down there. And I asked myself, how am I enjoying that life? How is it that I got to take my family with private chef and a private, and just go around the Galapagos at our leisure to see some of the world's coolest endemic species to those islands? Got to make insane memories. I mean, we're on the most gorgeous white sand beach, all alone, by ourselves, and these two sea lions come up and want to play and entertain. And they put on this show. It was, dude, it was so crazy. I'm like, how did this even happen? And I think, where's the genesis? And part of that genesis is January 15th, 2009, declaring I'm gonna be a billionaire. I set something in motion 13 years ago that has been building momentum and every year I'm significantly wealthier than the year before. A billion, by the way, is a thousand millions. Like it is an inconceivably large number unless you know what a hundred million dollar feels like. If you know what $100 million looks like, how, how, how many of you know that you know what a billion can feel like? It's just 10 times that, right? Well, when you have 100 grand in the bank, you know what a million dollars feels like. And if you know what a million dollars feels like, you know what 10 million dollars, 10 million. If you know what 10 million feels like, you can, you can figure out what 100 million feels like. And if you can figure out what 100 million looks like, you can know what a billion feels like. How many of you get this? So all we're trying to do is figure out how am I manifesting more of what I want? And here's the crappy part. Only a part of your journey is found in doing your job better. I believe that the majority of it is found in the alignment of the choices that you're doing in your personal life. When are you waking up? How are you investing in your body? How are you investing in your relationships? Are you doing the things in your heart and in your mind that you know that you should be doing? Are you honoring God in the way that you feel that you should be honoring God? Are you honoring your obligations in the way that you feel that you should be? If you are, then you have alignment and with alignment comes momentum. When you have momentum, then 10 years might seem like a really far way away, but most of you in this room are young enough, you're gonna snap your freaking fingers, 10 years is gonna pass, and I hope that you wake up not 10 times wealthier, but you could wake up a thousand times wealthier. A thousand millions is a billion. Seems like an inconceivable number, but it's actually just a milestone in a journey. I'll know what a hundred billion dollars at my age where I'm at, I'll know what a hundred billion dollars feels like in my lifetime. How did all that start? Alignment, getting your life together. So what I really want to talk about right now is where is your alignment in relation to this company? Cause I'm going to tell you that even today, still 10 years later, a recent Gallup poll still suggests it's a magic figure. Do you know what percentage of people don't like their jobs? 85. 85 percent of people do not like what they do for a living. And here's what they don't understand: that misalignment will keep their job from ever giving what they want. First of all, if you're in a job that you don't like because that's where you've mentally put yourself and yet that's the job out of victimhood you feel like you can or should have because it's all that's available or the best you can get and you're misaligned in your feelings of what you do 40, 50 hours a week and how you feel about it. If you're not making enough money, what is the destiny of that person? Poverty, because they're moving backwards. If that person is one of the 85% that says there's parts of my job that I don't like, but I do it because I'm a prostitute. I'll give my time, they'll give me a paycheck, I'll do things that I don't like to do. It's a weird form of prostitution. And by doing that, because of that misalignment, if that person is able to just barely pay their bills, tell me where they're gonna be 10 years from now. 
Think of the same place, by the way. Marianne said it. If we're not growing, we're dying. Which is, do you know what death looks like 10 years later for that person? That isn't further ahead? That feels like they haven't made progress? Do they feel more hopeful or do they feel more hopeless? hopeless. Are they more excited or more depressed? Yes. Do they stand tall or do they slump? Some. Do they sleep better or worse? worse. Is their health better or worse? worse? Are the relationships better or worse? worse? Which means that you've got to figure out how to get in alignment. Let's talk about the person that is in a job that is making them more than enough money, but they're out of alignment because they don't like their job. What will this person do with all of their savings? All their excess? They could spend it or they could save it but they're likely not investing it and they're likely not liking their life because they are doing something that they don't wanna do in hopes that the outcome will justify the means down the road. This person everyday practices having a life that doesn't honor their purpose. They don't like who they are because if you don't like your job, now I wanna tell you something, I wanna teach you a little secret now. Here's what the 85% don't get. They fantasize greener grass somewhere and they think that there's a perfect job. Similarly, how many of you have ever been discontent in a relationship that wasn't going the direction that you wanted it? Raise your hand. If you've ever felt that way, raise your hand. If you've also had the thought, I wonder if the grass is greener in a different relationship. Your mind wants to believe that there's an easy road to getting what you want. Oh, this job sucks enough. There's gotta be a better job for me. This person sucks there's gotta be a better person for me. What's the common denominator? The person. Is it really what they do that matters? I'll tell you right now, it matters significantly less than how you choose to control your own thoughts, feelings, and emotions about what you do. Let's be honest. Let's talk about your jobs. How many of you know what it's like to get on a call with someone that doesn't really wanna be on the phone with you, it's an uphill battle, they're filled with nothing but rejection and obstacles that you have to overcome and you'll sit there and think, oh, this sucks. Raise your hand if you've ever been there. In the moment that you play that game, feels totally justifiable because everyone else does too. But remember, everyone else isn't living an extraordinary life. They're just part of the masses that are lost, following each other blindly like lemmings over the cliff every single day. Do you have control about how you feel about the parts of your job you don't like? Yes, yes. I got news for you. I own a lot of companies. And I'll tell you right now that the more companies you have and the more success you have or the more fame you have or the more money you make, do you think that that can eliminate all your problems? Do you think it makes the SEC magically go away or other uh, regulatory agencies that would love to nail you to the, to the board? Do you think that it makes lawsuits go away magically? It's like, no, you get to have all the success and no problems, no personnel issues, no leadership issues. Like everything's great. And you know, you're totally like economic proof, right? It doesn't matter if there's a recession. Like the reality is life has things that suck everywhere. You get in a committed relationship, I promise you there are things that suck about being in a relationship with that person. You pick a job that you think's great, and then you start trying it out and find out there's parts you don't like, and your mind has the power to convince you that the grass is greener somewhere else, and that there's a life out there where you don't have to experience that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I have paid enormous sums of money to discover how much of that is really possible. And within reason, there are choices that are superior to others. There are opportunities that are better than others. There are people that are better from you than others. All of this is true, but at some point you're gonna hit the wall. And here's my rule of thumb. When inspiration and intuition tell me that I should do something, beyond logic, when there's a feeling, how many of you know what it's like to opt into a challenge or, or, or a new life direction because of a feeling, yeah? Let me tell you what most humans do. In that moment, they'll say, that's God speaking through me. That's my higher self. This is a decision that feels right. And they're gonna go for it. But the moment it gets hard, guess what they second guess? That feeling. So they'll use a beautiful feeling to choose in, and then they'll allow an ugly feeling to choose out. This person will never amount to anything because they just move with the winds and the motion of the water and they are being moved by external forces that they believe are outside of their control. 
When inspiration speaks, it usually chooses the path of greatest meaning and importance, not the easy one. It's usually the path less traveled. And if that's the path that you're on, here's your obligation to bring your life into alignment. I challenge you to find all the things in your life that you don't like based on your attitude and correct it. Don't swap the circumstance. Don't swap the object. Don't swap the person. Don't swap the opportunity. Swap your attitude. Momentum comes from alignment and alignment to some extent is controlled by the choice that you make. But then once you've made your choice by inspiration, there's only one thing left to do. Find the hardest parts, build the most positive attitude about it, and then conquer where everyone else will fall short. Because there was a time when I was in a game very similar to this, and there were days when I told myself how much it sucked and how much it, how hard it was, and no one was listening, and I got a bad batch of leads, and you know I didn't get you know phone numbers and just emails, and I got these internationals, and you know I got this nationality, and I would basically come up with excuses. How many of you know what that's like? That is the game of victimhood. And if you play that game, you'll be like everyone else living an unextraordinary life. An extraordinary life does not begin with an extraordinary opportunity. As much as I think this is an extraordinary opportunity, it begins with an extraordinary attitude about whatever opportunity you felt right about choosing into. So raise your hand if you know you're supposed to be here. Great, then you have an obligation right now to find everything that is misaligned in your attitude and energy, and whose job is it to correct it? Your it would be the best hour of your life today before you go to bed to evaluate, evaluate your relationships, your health, your relationship with God, your work, and just make a list of everything that you don't feel okay about. And realize that if you could control your attitude on all of those things and fix it, all of a sudden, greater results would come your way your efforts would matter because they would be consecrated, because you would be all in, because you would be aligning all of your energy, your attitude, and your mindset with what you want. If you can eradicate everything you don't like, it's not about changing out people, it's not about changing opportunities, it's not about changing out things, it's not about your circumstances. If you can fix your attitude on every single one of them, then you will be doing your part to bring everything in alignment where you can harness the power of momentum. And then here's the truth. You don't have to be at it for days. You must be at it for years. January 15, 2009 was a long time ago. But dropping six figures on a really cool trip to the Galapagos, I'll remember that one forever. That happened all those years later, as well as going to Ukraine, and I was in Hawaii three weeks before, and Marianne's right. I am pleasured out from travel. I am turning off all travel as much as I can for the rest of the year but travel's still gonna take me to some places to improve your opportunities and everything that we're building together. Control what you can. It's not about changing out people and things. It's about changing what you can control, which is your feelings about it. Which means, and if you want the ultimate hack, you guys want the ultimate hack? Yes. yes. Fall in love with that which you detest most. The people that trigger you the most Turns out they're your teacher, not your enemy. They're the person you're meant to learn from. They have lessons for you because they trigger you so. <sighs> Turns out that no matter how good of an excuse you think you have against a spouse, a loved one, someone who died, an opportunity, a job, a career, an investment, whatever it is that you're talking about here, if you can run towards the thing that you have been running away from, if you can embrace what you've been rejecting, if you can fall in love with what you thought the enemy was, that is what max growth trajectory looks like to bring yourself into alignment so that you can gain momentum and actually have your efforts mean something instead of waking up a decade from now and having it mean nothing. You're all here because you want your life to go somewhere. Fix your energy, fix your attitude, bring it all back into alignment, and then your inspired choices will have the power to finally give you what was always there. Love you guys, take this message to heart, have a freaking awesome week, appreciate you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.
Two, three.